So I was scrolling through Twitter and I saw another content creator who is called James Q Quick. He has a YouTube channel. I definitely recommend go subscribe to his channel and follow him on Twitter. He posted this question using Next.js server actions. How do you reset your form after submitting? And this is something I actually ran into a while back where I couldn't figure out a way to like actually make the form reset when you submit it using only React server components, right? You can use client components to achieve this, but I wanted to do this without having to have a separate file with a use client at the top. It's just extra overhead in my opinion for something that should be simple. And if you go to this post and read through it, a lot of people respond with, well, you gotta use client components. That's the only way you can do it is just use client components. And I wanted to kind of share with you in this video how you can do that only using server actions in React server components, not using any client components whatsoever. Um, as you can tell here, he says, most of the responses to this have been to enable a client side component. Is there not a way to do this without client side JavaScript? I think this would be a common necessity with server actions. And I agree, I think this is a common thing. Why do we have to opt into client components to reset a form or do some simple things with a, uh, a server side rendered approach? So my naive response was, well, you can just do a math.random key on the form so that when the action finishes running and it revalidates the front end uh, router in next is gonna basically force this to create a new form clear out all the input values and you'll have a reset form. But I've been kind of going back and forth with another Twitter user called Jesse Pence. Um, if you want to go follow him, he's been kind of helping me out, you know, understand how some of the stuff is working. He pointed out that like, hey, if you just use a math.random on the key, your entire form will reset. Hopefully he doesn't mind I'm sharing his Twitter handle. We'll go ahead and give him a follow at Jesse Pence 5 if you want. So anyway, that led me down a path of like playing around with Next.js, playing around with React server components, playing around with server actions. Can I achieve this without touching any client components? And this is what I have. I don't think it's the best solution, but it works. So here's the form. When I click submit, that's going to call a server action. The server action takes the form data, it validates it with Zod, and then it takes the Zod errors and it sends it back in the query string. This is the part that I find kind of gross. I wish there was a different way to do this. The only other approaches I can think are setting cookies so that this can't be bookmarked on accident or this can't be shared on accident. This isn't something you wanna be able to like pass around to various users. So I think setting it in cookies might be a better approach. Um, but unfortunately, those are the only things I can think of to communicate data between the server action and the actual React server component when it re-renders. So now if I were to go over here and type in like, my name is Bob, age, I'll click submit here, age 10. I think I forgot the parse end here. Okay, so let's just go ahead and submit. And there you go. So when you have a successfully submitted form, you'll notice that these things clear out. And again, this is all achieved without using a single client component. Technically, we could show a success alert down here if we wanted to, but the way that you have to kind of encode the state has to be in the URL or in a cookie. All right, let's talk about the actual code. So here's the code. Let's start with the actual page. So we are rendering a page. We've taken the search parameters, and this is where we're encoding the errors that happen after the server action finishes running. And down here, we have a form, which when it's submitted, it calls this submit form action. Now inside the form, we have an input, which is for the name, and we have an input for the age. Pretty straightforward, right? Now, as far as the errors are concerned, I have this helper function that basically just looks at the query string and tries to figure out like, did name exist in the query string? If it did, let's just go ahead and show the error for name or for age, pretty straightforward. Now let's look at the, the action first, and then we will follow up with looking at the key. Again, this key hack is how to get the form to reset. But looking at the action here, we got a submit form action. And when the form submits, we get a form data. We basically get a Zod schema, which I'm defining up here. It's a Z object with a name and an age. And I take the form data and I pass it to that schema here. Now notice I have this all wrapped in a try catch. If for whatever reason the Zod validation fails, it's gonna throw an error and I have to catch it right here. So before I dive into this, I do wanna point out that this try block is doing a redirect call. And in Next.js, when you call redirect, it actually throws an exception, which I find kind of weird. The exception is caught by Next.js and that'll redirect you to another page based on that exception being thrown. So if you accidentally put this in a try block, you need to make sure in the catch block, you're checking to make sure the error, if it is a redirect error, go ahead and just bubble that up. Otherwise, we can go ahead and use Zod, stringify the errors, and I'm just redirecting to the same exact page. I'm doing an encode URI on this stringified adjacent object here so that I can kind of put it all in the query string. And that's kind of how the server action works. So that later on in the, the server component when it reruns, 
this get field error is actually taking that error map, which is doing up JSON pars on the errors that are sent over in the query string. And we just look up to see, hey, is like name exist here? And if it does, we just go ahead and, you know, show the error for name. So that's how I'm doing the backend form validation when you submit a form. Um, again, there's no use client directives anywhere. This is all server side. So if you want to achieve something only using server side uh, React, or React server components, this is an approach you could potentially take. I highly recommend leave a comment if there's another way that you can foresee kind of encoding these errors because unfortunately the only ways I know to have communication between this action and this without using a client component would be using the URL query string or by setting a cookie. You can't set headers for some reason inside of the action, so that's not a way that you can communicate between these two um, functions. I wish there was a way to like get the return data from the action and use it somehow here so that I don't have to make another file and add use client at the top and then like make a form and then add in like all these additional hooks. It would be nice if I could just get access to whatever the return value was of the action and that could just pipe in to the re-render of my page so that I could use that information. All right, so let's talk about the form clearing out. So notice I have a key here. And instead of doing math.random, I'm actually doing get form key, which is a function that's checking for a cookie on the page. So what, what I'm using this cookie for is if the form key were to ever change, it's going to go ahead and just reset the form for me. Okay. Now the cookie is set up here. Again, in this try block, after we've done the Zod pars, we set a cookie, a form key to math.random. And this is going to basically force the form to clear out. If I were to comment this out, let me just kind of demo what's going on here. So let's just do this. I'll say Bob, I'll say 20, click submit. Notice that the form does submit, the server action runs, everything's good, but the form still has stale data in it. Not the best user experience. We like that to clear out. So again, that's why I have to kind of add in that weird little hack for the form keys. Now, technically you could put these keys on the inputs themselves instead of the form if you wanted to. Um, so that React doesn't have to re-render the entire form instead of just re-render these inputs directly. I think this will work. Let's just try it out. I'm going to go ahead and put 20 here, click Submit. Don't know why that made two inputs. Now, I think the reason this isn't working because, I mean, this is two identical keys. So technically, you have to, like, append it um, with name. This one over here, you have to append it with age, something like that. And I think that will actually fix it. Let's try that, Submit, and it clears out. So what solution is better? I don't really know. I mean, just putting the key on the entire form itself seems like it works pretty fine. So the last thing I want to point out is I have a function called is redirect error. I'm importing that directly from next disk client components redirect. This feels kind of dirty to me. Um, luckily on Twitter, I made a post and someone actually made a PR to try to get this to be like a top level export from next slash uh, headers or next.navigation. If you look over here, Ian Mitchell, shout out to him. He made a PR, which basically allows us to directly import, um, yeah, from next navigation. So if you look at the file changes, he's basically just saying, give us access to is redirect error so that we don't have to import from some strange private location that could potentially break in the future. Instead, we have like a top level import that we can depend on. Who knows? When it comes to open source, sometimes you make a PR and it literally sits there open for months and then someone closes it. So it's also failing tons of tests. So I don't know if this will ever get merged in. But anyway, that's all I got. So hopefully you guys learned something from watching this and enjoyed me rambling about this, uh, this mad scientist approach to figuring out the problem where we can't use client components to do validation errors and stuff like that. So if you have a solution that you can think of yourself, be sure to just leave a comment or you know reach out to me on Discord, send me a message and say, hey, I found a better way that you can achieve the same thing that's not as hacky as how I did it here. I'd be eager to hear other people's solutions. Other than that, yeah, have a good day. Happy coding and uh, click that like button.